Hello, welcome to the video. Today we're going to look at a GoTech and we're going to look at a GoTech for a 1581. Now, I'm sorry about the noise behind me, I've got a 3D printer going, so um, I'm actually printing a replacement case. So I got a cheapy GoTech off um, China, from China. Took three weeks to get here, which is pretty good for China. Um, yeah, and what we're going to do is install flash floppy on it, add a OLED and a rotary um, encoder, and we're going to slap this into a recreation 1581. Now I've made a few of those, and this is the third one I've made, and uh, I've got the PCB from 8-bit Retro Refix. Cheers, Steve. And um, I've built it up, and yeah, I thought I'm going to slap a GoTech in. So, yeah. So the first thing we've got to do is prep it ready for um, flashing. So, let's just take out the screws. Here we go. <coughs> yeah, so um, I've already um, printed the case in black, which I think is a bit of a mistake, because the other ones I've printed in a light grey colour and uh, they come out really well. Black shows up all the imperfections so if you are thinking of doing one then yeah just a word so wise. Um, the other thing is more, more of a rant. See I actually made the case for the 1581 replica and that's on Thingiverse and that's free for anyone but one particular arsehole is uh, claiming that he designed it and he's flogging copies of it. So yeah, you know who you are, and you're a wanker. Right, anyway, rant over. Here we go. So, what I'm printing at the moment is a replacement case. Now, I didn't design this bit. Um, someone else did. I got that off Thingiverse, and it's black. Um, you take potluck when you get them from um, China. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm printing one of these. that's already got the OLED uh, strip in it. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel and it's got a, a space ready for the uh, rotary encoder. Now looking on Flash Floppy's website, which is the firmware we're going to use, um, I've done a lot with GoTex in the past, but they've always been for Amigas and uh, Atari STs. Uh, and the Atari ST is a fabulous computer. Um, and they've always been the uh, STM chips. Well apparently now, the Chinese have decided they're gonna, you know, use a different chip, and uh, there's now three different variants. So you've got the, the original STM chip, you've then got the ATF, or what's it called, AT32F, Jesus, that's some small writing on there, uh, and that AT32 comes in two different sizes, a three, 315 and a 3 Three five four three five something like that, and this is well. Oh shit! This is yeah a four one five and a four three five. This is the worst one out of the lot apparently a four one five. Yeah, that's about right, isn't it? So shit. So in order to flash it, we're going to need to jump a jumper a key uh, pin header and uh, we need to prep it ready for an encoder um, most people if, if you're into doing a bit of uh, hobby stuff you're gonna have pin headers and shit laying around so let's have a look here so I believe we need a two pin header in there don't have to do this but I'm going to it's um, yeah I'm going to do that. Just makes it nice and easy when you're fucking around a bit later. You don't want to. You don't want to put a jumper in there. Go to flash it, and then the jumper makes a bad connection mid flash. You're in for a pretty shit time if that happens. Just do that. Now, I believe that's the right one. He says, looking at that. So I think what we need here is there's six pins there 
that need to be uh, ready to connect to the encoder and there's two down here that need strapping in firmware flash mode or to put it into firmware flash mode um, let's have a look there we go uh, dun, 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 dun. so looking at the um, flash floppy uh, website oh yeah okay it looks like this is an artery controller and it is these two so I'm just gonna just put a little drop of solder on there and um, yeah I'm gonna fix them in I know you're not gonna need it afterwards but well fuck it well while, while we've got to do something about the other the other pins it just makes sense really so here we go glove Yeah, I, uh, I realise some people might question, you know, why use a, a GoTek and a 1581 to begin with. And, well, I can see your point, but I just thought I'd do it. I've built up two more of these boards. So I've got an original 1581. I've got a clone that I've made from a uh, Forum 64, uh, from the, the Tom's 01 board, the original, the original clone, as it were. And uh, that's got an Amiga drive in it. And I've also built a second one from there because you can get them as a complete kit. Um, and that's that's got a PC drive with the adapter. He, he supplied that in the in the first one of boards. So let's just there we go. Now, when you do this, it's always going to do this. So then, what you do is grab hold of it and you readjust from underneath. Not burn your fucking fingers like I just did. Right, there we go. We adjust it to flat or close to it. Lovely. Here we go again. Nice. Okay, so now I can jump it out easily just by popping the jumper cap on. Now these here, I don't know if we can see this well on the board. But the six here, they require um, connections. Now I'm going to put pins in them. And the reason for that is that um, I like DuPont cables. And when you buy the encoders, you can usually get them on a little breakout board that's got DuPont headers on. So it only makes sense. That way you can just use a DuPont cable and you've got no problem. So what I'm gonna do to begin with, I'm gonna use some Kenwick which is desolder braid. And it's a copper braided um, flat, well not cable, but a ribbon. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and just absorb the solder out and clear the holes. Now this Kenwick stuff is really cheap. Get it off eBay like I did. It's really good. Some desolder braids are absolutely fucking diabolical. But this one's actually worked out quite well for me before. You'll see it turns silver as it absorbs the uh, solder. And uh, yeah. So now all you do is you just trim off the bit you don't need anymore. And carry on. It lasts for ages. You can get it in several meter lengths, you know. So there we go. That's removed the solar out of that tree. The sol the, the solder. Now all we're gonna do now is uh, not only does it look shit, but I don't like uh, I don't like the way that you have all that sort of shitty solder crap on the top. You don't know what type of flux they're gonna use, so clean the fucker off. A little bit of isopropanol, isopropyl alcohol, same thing. don't be afraid to give it a little bit of Ned Ted you're not going to hurt anything and there you go I don't know if, how, how well we can see this it's uh, super clean so now we're ready to drop on the next set of pins so I'm going to flux that up I'm going to flux the pins 
Now, I recommend always fluxing pins when you um, put pin headers in, purely because you'll you'll be soldering away like a good one, and then suddenly, whop, one fucker just will not want to solder, and you'll end up melting the entire asshole out of it just to get it in. So, save yourself a bit of grief, use a bit of flux. So I'm gonna pop them in there like that. I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, scrap female I have laying around, and I'll use that just to hold that together. There we go. And just like before, we're just gonna drop one out, one pin soldered, just to make sure it's all right. And I'm gonna take the center pin on one side. There we go. Now, now with a little bit of pressure, just there we go. It's gone flat now. You, the bottom of the pins has got a plastic piece on, and you can feel it when it's flush. So that's lovely. So now I'm going to do the middle pin on the other side. I realise you can't see because I've got my hand in the way. And that looks absolutely hunky dory. So, now let's solve them up. If you get two jumped together like that, just re-solder and drag the soldering iron away like that. Just lay that solder right in the middle of the two and just drag it away quickly. I tell you, it's a real pain in the arse soldering on the camera. Just inspect that. There we go. Now that all looks pretty good, um, except you've got all this shit around it. So don't uh, don't don't leave your your shit in a state like that. Just a little drop of isopropyl. Same thing as isopropyl alcohol. Just fucking clean it up. Yeah. Scrape all the shit off. Some of it can be a bit stubborn. But just yeah, just scrape it all off. Don't really want residue behind. Now, although I tend to use no clean fluxes, you should still clean them. There's a little drop more on those first two pins. There we go. And they'll come off nicely. There we go. Yeah, old cotton bud, no problem. Let's have a look. And there we go. Nice and clean, resoldered, and the board is now ready for flashing. Happy days. Right, so here we are back inside, and um, I managed to print a, uh, a new base earlier. Unfortunately, being black and shiny, it shows everything up. Um, to give you an idea, I'll just show you this. This is the black one I printed for this project. And uh, yeah, so inside I've got an Alpha Labs um, recreation board, one of two. Come from 8 bit retro refix. Cheers, Steve. As you can see, these are mostly built. Um, you can knock one of these up in oh, two, two and a half hours. It, it doesn't take long. There's not many components on there. So, yeah. Now, the other two that I built uh, are, are on the, um, the blackboards that come from um, Tom's O1 or Andro, Sid and Bobble from Forum 64. And they're slightly different. And uh, they work really well, and you can get them as a kit. So, yeah, so I've got the GoTech in, and I thought we're, we're gonna hit this up. So, 
I've never tried programming the firmware on one of these, so we're going to do that now. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try doing this with a standard phone programming uh, phone data cable. So you've got USB C to USB A, right? It's a cheap one, nothing special. So, yeah, okay. So let me just um, fire up the computer. Yeah, here we go, let's do that. And we're gonna start up OBS now. Right. Now if I plug in, I'll, I'll actually cut the OBS output into this, but if I plug in what normally goes into your computer or your, your phone charger or whatever into this, and then plug the USB side into my computer, I should be able to program it. So, here we go. So I plug that in the front. Nothing's caught fire. And it doesn't even look like it's powering up. Okay. Well, let me just unplug that for a second. Now, as I put the jumpers on earlier, I completely forgot that I soldered that on to put it into programming mode. So let's just slap a jumper on there. That's the whole point of me doing that earlier. Right, now let's plug it in. Anything or nothing, don't I? Right, let's have a look on the artery program. Well, there we go. So, yeah, it seems that um, it doesn't like that. Can you believe that? Okay. All right, what are we going to do instead then? Um, let's just refresh the browser. Nope. Don't have DFU device. What an absolute pain. Yeah, use the USB, it's easy. You see, every other time I've done this, I've always, always used a, um, uh, a TTL converter here. Let me just walk this into my other PC, which has also got that on there. And yeah, nothing. So it looks like in order to do that, you need a, an A to A, or um, I've got, I would have converters the other way, that'd be about right. Yeah, okay. Hmm, we'll come back to this another time. Right, so, after a few minutes of fucking around, it seems that using a phone data cable uh, wasn't the best idea, because that was going back to a USB 3, and that basically told me bollocks, it weren't having none of it. So I've now got a USB A to A lash up, um, it's only a short cable, so I've just got an A on both ends and an extension, so it can reach the PL. PC from here. Right, so um, if I, yeah, let's uh, let's start going on that one. If I fire up OBS, um, no, OBS is still going. Fantastic. All right. So let's just stop. Yeah, and go again now. Excellent. Right, so here we go. Here's our GoTech. Um, we're just going to plug into A to A, go into a USB 2 port. There we go, you heard it go ding, ding, ding. So you know it's actually found it this time. Now, if we switch over to the capture, we can see that it's found. Um, it's found a device 
VID, PID, and UID. So if we go next, flash size 128K. Um, yep, so we go next, and it says the target is uh, blah 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 415K BU, whatever the fuck all that is. So yeah, we got all that. Um, excellent. Let's go next. Here we go. So now we've got to tell it what we want to flash. And to do that, we need to disable the protection at the bottom here. Disable access protection. Uh, yeah. And the file name. That's not going to let you do anything. So if we go next, it should unlock it. Here we go. Disabling access protection. So basically, that's now taken the um, GoTech and formatted it for want of a better term. So that chip on there, that tiny little fucker here, is absolutely fucking empty. Right. There we go. Now we need to add the new firmware on. Let's go back and add the firmware. So I've got that on there. Let's go to uh, Flash Floppy, DFU, 415, boom. Fast format error, of course it is. What is that? Uh, flash upload from device, nope. Right, so what we've got to do is we've got to choose the right one. Let's download to device, I had that wrong. Um, let's add that file again, 415.dfu, no, format error. Why is that? Yep. Right, I'm selecting a DFU file, I don't think it is, I need the hex. There we go. So I've loaded up the hex file. Ah, oh, that's it, there it goes, and it's in here now. So all I've done is I've selected verify after download. And uh, yeah, that's it, let's go next. If uh, it's not selected, Okay, so now we can see it's flashing. We can see it doesn't take very long at all. It's a verifying operation finished successfully. Right, so there we go. That's how we do that. Now let's switch back over here and uh, turn that off there we go so the next thing we've got to do is um, add an OLED so we can actually see what the hell we're doing so we need to take it back out of programming mode we don't need that anymore so we take that off there we can disconnect well even if we don't disconnect it um, how are we going to do this we can just fire that up and uh, make sure everything works. So I'm going to prep for that. Right, so after a few minutes of having a look at this, it seems that it's quite straightforward to add an OLED. As you can see, it's a 128 by 32 pixel OLED there. And I'm just going to um, drop the USB power on that. And then with the firmware installed, it should at least give us a, a boot up message. So let's just plug that into the PC and there we go. Flash floppy 3.38 32k 
this is why this is the Minji one because it's only got 32k of uh, goodies in it. Shit. Either way, we know that we've just flashed this flash floppy onto this GoTech, and at least we're ready to rock and roll with a GoTech with a an OLED. So let's unplug that. So now all we've got to do is lash up the drive and um, yeah, that's, it presents me with another little problem. I've had a little bit of a nightmare of 1581s lately. Hello Steve. Um, and that's uh, left me without a, a, a spare floppy cable. So I went up in the loft and I found this in a, in a motherboard box. So yeah, it's a big one. And the, the elastic bands around it have turned into whatever that crap is but anyway I'm going to cut it up and I'm going to make a new cable I've got some 34 pin IDC so and a crimping tool and then we're going to be ready to um, yeah lash this up so ready for the next bit okay so here we are back on the bench um, so our go tech I've just lashed up um, an encoder board I've just used some uh, DuPont cables and connected it up. Um, I've got a, a small OLED in there. Unfortunately, this, this printed case thing, it doesn't um, give you any way to secure the OLED. Uh, so unless you're going to glue it or some shit like that, I'm not really... Hmm, I may redesign this myself. Um, just modify the model. Because... I mean, you, there's no way to actually use this uh, backboard either. So this would have to come off and um, just the bare encoder gets soldered to wires. But for the purpose of what we're doing today, that's no issue. I can just wedge that in there like that. And uh, yeah, so this encoder, you know, it's got detents on it so you can feel it notch as it goes around and push the button down. So this will be fine like that for what we're going to do. And also the... The screen will show what we're actually um, trying to load as well, which is a must. So yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't really like that screen like that. That's a bit, it's a bit fucking janky. That is. Yeah, I might, I'll, yeah, I might end up redoing this, to just redesigning it. So we've got an OLED. We've got it flashed. The only thing that I've done. Is I've changed, I've bridged the SO jumper, S0. So this is my board, courtesy of Steve from Make Brick Retro Refix. This one's assembled, as is the one under there. Um, like I said last time, you can you can build these very quickly. I've printed a uh, black case, thinking it would be okay. It's to be honest with you, I don't really like it in black. Um, the other ones I've printed have been like a grey or a creamy colour, um, much more closer to a, um, an actual machine than, yeah, black. It just looks shiny and shows up every little imperfection. So, I don't, yeah, I don't recommend that. But anyway, for this one, I mean, I've built two others and I've got an original 1581, so I'm not going to do anything about this. I'm going to keep it as black. Um... So yeah, so this is the uh, front fascia, and you can see as the light catches it, it looks pretty fucking, uh, yeah, shit. It's, it's a thing for 3D printing. Um, where it's shiny like this, it just shows up everything. So this is uh, part of the model that I designed. Um, so yeah. This will go in there like that. This will sit in there and just screw down to that. Then eventually this will fit in this position here. And as you can see, it will look like that. Um, but for what we're going to do, just to make sure it works everything, I'm not really that bothered at the moment. So we've got some female to female DuPont connectors. We need four. Just split them off and what we need to do 
let's put them in a line for the power just like that and you gotta make sure that's correct let's go in the back of the GoTech <coughs> now even though this is a Molex type connector uh, the DuPont pins clip clip over it perfectly as you can see there now now I'm going to use this just as a spacer so let's move that back and pop that front off there we go that can just sit there and sit on top of that just like that see the OLED's flapping everywhere it's not very good design that right so I took an old floppy cable and I've got some IDC crimps in a tool so what I did was I recrimped it I took this is the bit that's twisted over and I just untwisted it and recrimped it into a new cable which for this is going to actually work out pretty well so We've got to flip this over, so that's good, and pin one will actually I'll bend that over like that, and that will actually fit like that. So there we go, that's all we need to hook up, bloody OLED. Okay nice so now you have to flip the cable over if you because these the 1581 drives they were designed to use an amiga drive chiefly um that, that's that's why they ended up ripping a load out back in the uh late 80s early 90s and you could pick up kits minus the drives because they were being used in amigas so yeah they they literally dismantled a load <laughs> and flogged them off as kits um, but the GoTech is going to act as an Amiga drive, so that is the, the the whole crux of this. With this uh, this little daughter board, we can actually use a PC drive, and this chip here gives it the reset functionality that it's missing. So I've taken an old USB and I put some 1581 images on. There's no um, flash floppy control files or nothing it literally is just the d81 images on there um you don't need it for what we're going to do you do not need it so and because you've got the oled you're going to be able to read what the actual names are anyway now going back to this floppy crossover a few moons back um i actually designed the first mounts for gotex to go into um Atari STs and that was because when I did my Atari they I could never get the bloody cable to reach so I thought ah oh, if I take the GoTech out design a mount for it upside down the cable doesn't have to twist so I think still got a prototype here in black that I made all those years ago so yeah but i actually made a retainer that slid in behind the oled to hold it in place and this this screwed in in place of the um in in place of the floppy so it's a non-destructive mod but anyway that's that's going off on a bit of a tangent so yeah that that was the whole reason i did that and you're going to have to flip your floppy cable over so make sure you've got enough space this is the other end well i'm also made these two plus that out of one floppy cable and just added a couple of connectors and crimped it myself and that's all you've got to do so what we're going to do is we're going to leave this here and uh i'm going to set up ready for having a look on the actual machine and then you can see it loading right so here we are unfortunately i'm gonna to have to hold the camera so i've got an easy flash free and um yeah i've got the old test set up so what we're going to do is if we power up the 1581 you should be able to see and i hope it's legible there we go disc image one track zero side one and that's creatures two 
So if we turn on 64, there we go. Let's give it a soft jiffy kernel. There we go, and we go load star comma eight comma one. Now before I press go on that, let's see if you can't if you can read the screen. It should give you a track display as it loads. 38.0, yeah, 37 side zip. Look at that. Fuck me, that's going some and it's in. Okay. We can see that we're pulling 290 milliamps on the 5 volt line. Nothing on the 12 volt line. Oh, this is going some now that there's a track display going. Track 29 side zero. Oh, there we go. Just like that. So now, if we turn the encoder, we can see creatures too. Oh look, bat, Ubisoft. Okay, so if I restart 64, choose Jiffy again, load, star, come on, 8, come on, 1, here we go, and it's in and ready, run. Alright, what's going on here? So, oh yeah, it's loading, look, you can see the track display going. And there it is. So if I then turn off the 64, twist it, choose another image. You don't have to turn it off to, tw to choose another image. That's an empty, so I've got two empty, there you go. I've loaded two empty D81 files on there, so if I turn that on. Uh... Yeah, why not load Jiffy? Why not? Um, let's just have a look at what's on the disk. As you can see, it's empty, 3160 blocks free. So if we go 10, print, yeah. Look at that. All right, there we go. Now, if I go save uh, CC comma eight. Now, I don't know if you can see a little W's appear in there for writing, and it says it's done. So let's turn that off. Turn it back on. There we go. Load up directory, list, look at that. So now if I go load, comma eight, comma one, ready run, yeah, woo, list, so you can see it's saving to D81 files as well, and there it is, look at that. Right, so, okay. Let's choose another image. Labyrinth. Um, we should be able to just carry on loading. Because it thinks it's just inserted another disk, that's all. So load star, comma eight, comma one. Boom. Load error? What? Oh, that might be why. Hang on, let's just do a reset. Ready, ready, run. There we go. And track's going well. Activision's appeared on the screen. Look at that, straight in. Lovely. And there we are, labyrinth. Right. So, what else we got on here? T 
Turrican. Right, never really played this game. Not going to start now either. Right, load star, come eight, come one. That's going some. Tracks are going. Oh, it's in. And type run. Decompress. It's decompressing right so you can weird dreams okay loading ready run look at that Oh, just like that, it's in. So there's there's no issue here. You can read it, write it, it works just as uh, as it should. So I'll put that on World Games. So look here. Here we go again. Boom. Something's going on. Bearing in mind that not only have I got a cartridge and I'm running jiffy, some games were a bit bit twitchy. This may well be one of them. Yeah. Might have found one that you don't like. That should decompress by now. Yeah, it didn't like that at all. It might be the image is no good. Like I said, I've just grabbed these off the off the net, so yeah. Let's try um here we go. Yeah, it's not liking this one at all. But that's down to the image. Um, they're not all equal. And it's for it to work on a GoTech, it's got to be spot on. So, anyway, I'm calling this a win. This is uh, absolutely the way it should be. Um, which one's that? There we go. Look at that. Just got to turn this round. Yep. And uh, yeah, so if you want to get a GoTech working inside of 1581, this is how you do it. So I'm not going to um, put it together yet. I'm, I'm probably going to end up modifying this case because um, I, don't, I don't like some of the features on it, especially how it holds the OLED in position. So, yeah, not not overly happy about that. But that's how you do it if you wanted to do something silly like run a Go -Tech in a 1581 drive. So, I hope someone finds some use for this uh, pretty useless thing. But there you go. Um, thanks for watching. Check out 8-Bit Retro Refix. I'll see you on the next one.